Welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman, where you'll learn how to awaken your divine soul and open your human heart. Sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. Here's Sarah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. I am so happy to be with you here in this middle part of April 2018. And as you know, today is Free Readings Tuesday. What what I like to do, this is a call-in show, so what I like to do is do Free Readings Tuesday, and that means you can call in for a free reading about whatever you would like to look at. And you can also call in simply if you have a comment about whatever we're discussing or you want to share an experience that uh, you've, you've had in your life of a spiritual or intuitive nature. Um, this is really a, an open forum for spiritual community. Um, anybody who's interested in finding their way in this sort of new pioneer exploration of the soul, this new way of looking at spirituality as something that is something that uh, that you do on your own in connection with the divine. You're not following any particular rules or regulation. It's really a relationship that you are creating with the universe. So Free Readings Tuesday, you can call in to 888-298-5569 And today our subject is When does spiritual change happen? When does spiritual change happen? And by this we mean how do we make our way from one level of consciousness to the next level of consciousness. And, you know, consciousness, it's somewhat of a, I don't know, sometimes we seem in a fancy word. You might also say, uh, how do we make from one level of compassion to the next level of compassion or from one level of kindness to the next level of kindness or even um, for those of you who use this kind of wording, from one level of non-attachment to the next level of non-attachment. And for those of you who use this languaging, from one level of direct connection to the next. And what I'd like to say is uh, the spiritual awakening, the spiritual change it kind of creeps up on you. <laughs> it's kind of like one of those things that, um, you know, it, it just one day uh, something happens or over many days, little things happen, little changes happen. And, and you uh, realize that you're not at the place where you were. You've moved beyond. Now, a, a lot of, you know, uh, have the idea, uh, we hear a lot about spiritual change happening during, say, a uh, near-death experience or some kind of trauma or drama that really shifts you. And, and this is true. This is how a lot of folks, uh, myself included, have this big jolting breakthrough type spiritual awakening or spiritual change from being asleep to being awake. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. And the other thing is, you know, I was uh, on the radio this past week at a station in New York. I'm, I'm starting a, a radio tour for my new book, Messages for, from the Divine. And the host was asking me about this experience that I had. And uh, I was kind of uh, reluctant. And I was like, well, what's that about? And I realized, one, it's, it's 18 years ago. Okay, so that's a really long time ago. But the other thing is that even though that awakening, that big awakening at the time was the most important thing in my life, what's happened since then is that there have been many, many, many 
other awakenings. And this is how it is for all of us. It's not just this, okay, the big, you know, trauma or drama or whatever it is happens and we're awake. It's, it's that, uh, that is one point of opening. And then after that, there are many progressive, continuous times that we are going to be awakened. Um, we just keep walking through the next door. Um, here's the way to think about it. So I like to, um, <laughs> I like to lift weights. I'm not a, I'm not like a bodybuilder. I just like to go to the gym. I like to push against stuff and it, it is very satisfying to me. And if you are a gym goer, uh, and you have that experience or could be anything, uh, any other physical experience where you're challenging yourself personally, you know, you go to the gym, maybe you haven't been there for a really long time. <laughs> And, and you're trying to lift some weight and it is so heavy. You're like, there's no way. And it's very humbling and it's very challenging. And you really have to have your head in the game. Like, oh, I can't lift this. This is, this is, this is too hard. I can't, I don't get it. I, I can't do it. And then maybe you kind of diligently keep working on your weights and in this case, we're talking about our spiritual selves. And then one day you go back after a lot of practice and you go to that same weight. And you go and you think, oh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be so hard. And then you lift it and it's easy. And it's easy. And this is the same stuff that we're having in spiritual change. We are working on, you know, say we're working on some relationship issues or we're working on some healing of past trauma or we're working on our intuition or we're working on our meditation practice. And it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. And then one day change has happened. Change has come and it's easy. Spiritual change happens it creeps up on you as you're doing your practice day in, day out. On one day, you realize you are no longer where you were. You have moved beyond. Let's just close our eyes. We're going to do a quick meditation. I always like to do that in the show. And then we're going to go to our callers. So go ahead and close your eyes if you're in a place you can. If you can't close your eyes, don't. Just kind of listen along. But I just want you to bring up into your mind, bring up into your awareness, just like what the big problem is that you're working on. And I want you to just have that big problem right there. Big problem, the big problem you've been working on a long time. And then I want you to just see a doorway in your vision or your imagining, just right there alongside the problem. And I want you to just go around to the problem and, and sort of with respect say, you know, thank you for challenging me. Thank you for allowing me to work on this soul lesson. Thank you for bugging me so I'd keep working on it. I just want you to just put that problem in there. We're just going to do one problem. You can do other problems later on on your own. But for now, just put that one problem in there. Thank it, appreciate it. And then I just want you to go through that door that's also in your image and just walk through into the next room. I want you to look around that space or room or wherever you end up and notice there's no problem in that room. You've moved beyond it. And I want you to turn around and try and go back to the problem and you realize you can't keep going through these doorways of consciousness. 
wants you to go through a doorway. Whatever was the problem that you were working through, it's, it's gone, it's dissipated, it's dissolved. That situation is no longer in your awareness the same way. We change, we expand spiritually. And this is not a one-time thing. It's something that's continuous. It's a continuous progression. Not only in this lifetime, but keeping going. The soul just keeps expanding. And we're going to come back to this reality in 1098 Seven six five four three two. We're back in the room. If you like this style of teaching, uh, my new book "Messages from the Divine" is up on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, Indiebound. Uh, get that ordered now. We've just launched it, and uh, we have a free seeker's guide that also goes with the book. It's an eleven-week free course. And so what I'm trying to do is get everybody to get their books ordered so that when the Seeker's Guide rolls out in May, everybody will have their books and be able to follow along. Uh, Complete information at sarahwiseman.com on that. Okay, let us go to the phones. And first up, we have Marcy calling from Miami. Marcy, welcome to the program. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yes. Sure. What can I help you out with today? Um, well, it's interesting that you're talking about transformations and and change and 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 so forth. And I I definitely feel like uh, I'm in the middle of, of, of a few transformations in my my lifetime right now. And um, I, I I'm just like one right now. I'm separated from my from my husband. It was a short marriage but um still separated still working on it and don't know whether i'm uh you know just facing a wall really with that one and and the other one is is my work um where i'm very dissatisfied with what i'm doing um in many ways in many for many reasons um so that's kind of like in a nutshell what um what i'm in what have in my mind Mm -hmm. so it's interesting because for me, what comes up for you, and I don't think that this is always the case at all. In fact, I don't think it's the case, but it feels like the 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 core of the issue is the same for both things that are kind of uh, that you're working on, both for the relationship and the career. Do you have any uh-huh. feeling like what that core might be? Well, um, I am thinking that perhaps it's um, that I, I stay, I linger on when uh, I know that this is not the right place or it's not mm-hmm. the that right thing for me. So I just, I tend to give more and more chances or linger and linger, or like maybe doubt, you know, actually doubting, doubt my own self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What I wrote down, um, and so I have back chills, so that means I don't usually get back chills on the fo- on the on the um, show, so that's good. <laughs> but I mean, I mean that's good because it's a really solid sign that you're speaking you're speaking the truth for yourself. And what I'm getting is that it's a lack of trust in your own knowing. It's like I think you said it, the lingering, but it's really like you know it. And but you're afraid to act on it. And and I also think that it's like you're following the society's version of how things should be. But in your own heart, you're very much a you're very different than um, the mainstream, even if you're trying to fit yourself into the mainstream. That's not really who you are. Um, right. And you're trying to, you're yeah, you're trying to kind of shoehorn yourself into like, okay, I gotta be in a marriage and I gotta be this job, and that's not even what you really want. So it's like you're, you know this, but then you're not trusting, you're not trusting yourself because that's not what society says. Right. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> Go ahead. No, um, I, I, I was thinking with that with the people, like, um, uh, especially the ones I work with, I then it tends to go into butting heads because they don't either understand me or, um, and even in my marriage, it's um, not feeling understood either. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you're trying to, you know, be that classic. I can't remember which way it goes, but it's like square peg in the round hole. So exactly. In those <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so stop trying to fit into, um, who you're not and really uh -huh. just step into like figuring out who you are. Like in my own life, you know, I was, I was a soccer mom before this. Right. And that, that was not a fit for, <laughs> that was not a fit for me at all. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but for me, it, it, it wasn't my path and it feels like you're trying to squeeze yourself into what you think the path is that you're supposed to be on and and that's not what you're supposed to do so, so what, um, uh, do you can you give me a, a an enlightenment as to what path to <laughs> because I'm, I'm um, stuck there i'm like not stuck but you know maybe in fear yeah. of what steps to take yeah so i'm not sure specifically because it feels like that's part of your journey but i would say that you're very intuitive and you're very um creative and you're very um kind of like you you're quirky like you see things really differently and i would just you know the universe will lead you to where you're supposed to go once you sort of allow yourself to be led by this strong intuition that you have i would just okay. begin to pay attention to where the universe is trying to lead you instead of you know, what you think you should be doing, what your mind is saying you should be doing. I, I think okay. that in a couple of years, you'll look back at this and realize that um, you'll just realize how how far you've come. I, I think you're in a really solid position of, of a lot of growth going to happen. And um, all of this is going to be, fig you're going to figure all of this out. So, so have hope. Yeah. It's all going to be fine. It's all going to be fine. Yeah, just be Wonderful. be yourself and yeah. Yeah. Well, Marcy, thank you so much and I appreciate thank your call. You. I'm I'm going to Yeah, thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. All right. Good luck to yeah. you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we yeah, you know, guys, if you are not fitting in the map this or you know, if you're not happy following the map that society says, don't follow that map. Throw that map away. Use your own map. You know, we're all pressurized that we have to perform or be or act or live or do in a certain way. And, uh, you know, we don't. We don't need to do that. There's so many ways to live your life. And each of us here as, you know, as souls, we're very, we're called to be on these unique paths. And just allow yourself to discover what, what your unique path is. All righty, let us go to, looks like we have Sarah calling from Boston. Sarah, welcome. Hello, how are you? Thank you for Very having good. my call. You're welcome. Uh, what can I... Uh... Well, it's, it's very strange because just the last caller, this is on the same theme. Um, I was, I've, but I've been married a lot longer, 25 years, and I've been separated, effectively separated for 18 months. Um, and I'm starting to sort of, I suppose, see from that distance um, the patterns that were there all along. And um, th th I've been going through a lot of grief with it. And yes. I sort of was always aware, I was conscious that um, uh, at the time when, when it was very tumultuous, when it was all happening and, and my children all sort of were pretty much leaving at the same time, um, and I found myself sort of all alone uh, as an expat wife um, uh, and feeling very isolated. And so, and I had asked the universe for a, an acceleration <laughs> and of course mm -hmm. you should be careful what you wish for. And I do believe that the universe has said, for goodness sake, you're not going to get on with your, this, the stuff we want you to do. Um, we're going to make it, you know, we're going to make it difficult for you not to. So I do sort of mm -hmm. see that, that, that this has happened and this, this, it's been rather dramatic, the, the changes mm -hmm. that happened just overnight. 
but I find myself stuck because I also think mm-hmm. within me there's a pattern of I need, you know, I want someone to hold my hand, but the same same thing as, before, as the last caller, you know, I'm conventional, I want approval, I want acceptance, I want to fit in, and I just, I'm stuck, and mm-hmm. uh, I don't know how to move forward. Yes, okay. Thank you so much. I, I think that there are uh, a lot of people listening who... Um, have are in or have been in or may soon be in your scenario. So mm-hmm. let's just break it. Let's just break it down a little bit. So yeah. 25 years is a really long time to be married. And that is, um, I'm not, I'm not thinking so much about the relationship. It's really more about 25 years of you holding yeah. an ident- identity, that identity. And yeah. In, the, in a lot of ways, I think, and 18 months is a very long time to be separated and not divorced. Yeah. That that sort of is a, a piece that, uh, it's like being stretched and stretched and stretched like taffy until finally it's going to get so thin, you know, there won't be any more taffy left to pull. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, the grief is about, the grief is about the identity yeah. more than yeah. the relationship. And and, and and then we want to add the piece of the empty nest, which is is very uh, very much about losing that entire not only losing the identity of you know being a mom or being a wife, but it's like all of those memories and times that you had in your life are no longer available to you. You know, like the yeah. the times with the little, the little kids, and it's just like. And then you're sort of looking at your life going, well, well, now what? Uh, that was, those were the best years or, you know, those were good years, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, and right um, yeah. now what? Yeah. So here's, the, here's, here's how it is, is that the universe is asking you, okay, you did all that stuff. You had a very, very full, rich experiences as a, as a, mm-hmm. as a wife and a mother. And now the universe is asking you to look at those things that you're afraid of such as being alone, being unconventional, uh, needing approval. The universe is saying there's some work to do here around those types of, again, that fitting in kind of thing. Um, really asking you, like, can't, we can't, we can't, you're, you won't, you won't work on it if you're a wife <laughs> and mother. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're yeah, going no, to have you look so at true. this idea. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because, because you've got to do the scary things. Um, and it is, it's really different. I know I'm, I'm in emptiness too. And some days you, you know, you, we used to be so busy and now there's so much free time and it's like, well, what do I do with myself now? And, and, and it's different. Well, and, it's and, very and different. It's, it's, I think that, that for me, I've, uh, I'm literally alone in a country and my child, all my children are in different countries and my husband is in a different country. Um, and but but I'm not in my home country, and uh, <clears throat> there's a real isolation, and there's there's this fear that oh I'm I'm just uh, you know I'm not in, on anyone's radar anymore, and mm-hmm. this idea mm-hmm. you know and because my kids are all you know as, as kids do they're off on their own and they 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 just don't think to call mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. Um, and and I right. I find myself going into you know poor me victim me. Um, and wallowing there as opposed to sort of I, sometimes I find it easier just to wallow in that than actually confront mm-hmm. the, the fear of well, moving on. Yeah. So and I do want to add, you know, the kids, that's not really don't take that personally. That's just, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> that's just their yeah. age. Um, so I would love to to uh, almost like. um <sighs> Uh, and spiritually challenge you to Mm -hmm. uh, decide on a time frame that you're going to wallow a bit more, like maybe until May 1st, for example, (laughs) and then just decide that that's it. You know, you're going to, you're going to make some decisions by, and, and then I like to do, um, whenever I'm clearing something, I like to do some kind of a ritual using, writing and meditation and and just to mark like okay this is the end of the wallowing and the sadness and the fear and now I'm going to step into I'm going to step into uh wherever the universe is leading me just as I just as you stepped into all those other things you know just as you stepped into 
the marriage and the child and the other child, you know, uh, just give yourself this, this time frame, really grieve it out. And then let's move on because you have a long life ahead and there's no point being, um, in this, uh, this place of, of, of n- no movement or, um, yes. not meant to be I, here. I, and I think, I think that's the thing. Some, sometimes I think I'm, you know, I'm, the, the universe is giving me this time to actually, uh, like take mm-hmm. a breather and actually try and pull back that identity that I had before marriage, which, you know, I probably mm-hmm. put in a box on the side and to yep. bring it back and integrate it yes. again before I move on. And so I, some half of me thinks I'm meant to be in this place now to fully integrate before I step out. And then the other half of me thinks, oh, that's just an excuse for not getting on and doing it. And it's, you know, <laughs> there are yeah, two sides I think, and I'm not I, really sure which is the true, which is the true, um, you know, yeah, part. What, I, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm seeing is that... Uh, it's time to be done with the wallowing. I'd say give yourself to May 1st and decide you're going to move forward. And, you know, you may come back and have some grieving and memories later, but uh, just decide. Uh, there's the, you can't benefit from uh, yeah. just living in the past. Anyway, Sarah, yeah. we wish you the best. I'm going to head thank into a much. quick break. Yes, thank you. I'm going to head into a quick break. Everybody, you've been listening to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. You'll find me at sarahwiseman.com. And we will be back in just a moment. Are you an empath, intuitive, sensitive, or seeker who wants to learn more? Do you? long to master the secrets of spiritual intuition for personal or professional growth? Would you like to work directly with Sarah? Sign up now for Intuition University, Sarah's year-long program in spiritual intuition, where you'll study with a supportive group of kindred souls, just like you. Classes start every semester. Learn how you can become a student of Intuition University at sarahwiseman.com. Get your daily dose of variety. Alternative Talk, 1150. Jesus, Muhammad. All righty, we are back with more Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. And that song, Now to the Now, wow, what a good song for um, today's two, two first callers this idea of being in present moment and um, and no moving forward, can't look to the future, no moving back, can't look to the past. We got to just be where we are. Um, everybody, I invite you to, if you like these teachings and what we're talking about, I invite you to order uh, my new book, Messages from the Divine, and you can just go to sarahwiseman.com. It's right there on the front page. You can go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, etc., and get it online. You can pre-order it now. It's Messages from the Divine, Wisdom for the Seeker Soul, and that's what we're going to be working on going forward in the radio show. We're going to do the teachings from that book. All righty, let us go to our caller. We've got Myra calling from South Carolina. Myra, welcome. Hi, how are you? Very good. Thank you for your patience. Uh, what is on your mind today? Yeah, so I'm calling. Um, I've actually been listening to your show on and off for a while, and now I'm actually calling. It's crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I'm, my main concern is I'm, I'm really young. I'll be 25 in May, and I consider myself a very lucky soul to have met my, what I consider is my, my twin flame, my soulmate, my all those great names people like to call that other individual. Um, I finally met him after years of, um, you know, doing soul searching and, you know, practicing the law of attraction and all that stuff. We're not practicing it, but becoming aware of it and knowing how to use it, you know. And um, last October, um, or last, last fall, I got engaged. And, or we are engaged, mm-hmm. and I was in a place, I was in a great place. Um, I was 
in the start of my career in law enforcement, um, I was in a great place. And I said, you know, I'm going to make the transition to to where I am now in South Carolina because my fiancé is stationed in, um, in Shaw Air Force Base. And I've been here since October unemployed. And since before I made the move here, I was putting out applications and I thought this wouldn't be that big of an issue because finding a great job and doing well in school and all that stuff has always been so easy for me. I've always been so lucky with, with jobs and, and internships and all that kind of stuff. But I here I am employed six months unemployed six months and it's way on way mm. on because I'm in a small town. Yeah. And for every job yeah, so, I've applied for, I've been overqualified for. Yeah. So, so Myra, I, I want to yeah, Myra. Yeah, I just want to. Um, I think uh, I want to give you some information. Uh, so it feels like, because um, I was sort of like, what are what are the blocks? What are the the pieces that are holding you back? And mm-hmm. And um, I don't want to dishearten you at all because I think this is going to work itself out over time. But it almost feels like, um, I'm not going to say prejudice or misogyny or, I'm not sure that's exactly it, but it's almost like there's this uh, fear of, of you being an outsider to this community and that is creating these blocks and there's not a lot you can do about it right now, but you can be aware uh, that it's, it's not about you. It's not about um, the time being wrong. It's about these old beliefs that are in this community that you've come into. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest now. So I have these, I have, I have really strong uh, feelings about misogyny and racism and, genderism and and I'm I'm so against all of that um but for you right now it's almost like that's the block that's where it's coming from but the the answer is not to fight that stuff for whatever reason the universe wants you to be working on some other things like some personal things um I would just for a month or two just drop the idea of, of looking for employment. I know that sounds counterintuitive and strange, but I would just let it go and then attend to whatever, whatever stuff that you need to attend to personally, you know, whatever, you know, like we all have these personal things, this whole collection of (laughs) personal items we need to figure out and just really do your personal work for a month or two. And then reapproach, then reapproach the situation. I would imagine that there will be so much changing in your life uh, from this taking a break of trying to push forward. You know, if we're pushing forward and the doors aren't opening, the universe is trying to get us to push on some different doors. And that's what I'm that's what I'm seeing for you. It's like don't push where you've been pushing. Take a deep breath, come back to meditation or prayer or journaling or whatever your practices are. And allow the universe to lead you down to the doors that you're supposed to be knocking on. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna let you go with that there because I think you'll, um, I just want you to listen to it. I, I, I just want to give you that and um, just trust that in a couple of months all of this is gonna ease up. But you got to stop pushing in that one direction. Um, you got to let the universe guide you to another place to approach. Anyway, Myra, thank you so much for calling. I appreciate thank I appreciate you so your call. Much. Have a good one. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you guys, you know, the, always if the if you're pushing and pushing or you're uh, attempting, attempting, and nothing's working, nothing's working, it may be that the universe is trying to get you to head into a different direction. That's why nothing's working. I always like to let the universe lead me instead of myself, my mind, or my ego leading me. And the universe often takes us into these crazy, strange places that we would have never gone on our own. And I think that may be happening with Myra. She's going to experience some pretty different stuff, and that's what's going to be coming up. Let us go to the phones, and we have Jenny calling from Houston. Jenny, welcome. 
Hi, Sarah. And this is really Hi. interesting because I, I love reading you, first of all. I always, you're one of the few emails I actually read <laughs> when they come into my <laughs> inbox. So I was really happy mm-hmm. to be able to catch you live today. Um, yeah. In kind of in par with the first two callers, I'm also ending a relationship. I'm actually in the middle of a divorce. Um, been with this man for 14 years, and I started having a spiritual awakening um, in the fall of 2016. I mm-hmm. feel uh, completely overwhelmed. I'm getting too many lessons at the same time. And right now they're at like warp speed where it's um, several big lessons either daily or weekly. And I'm just really overwhelmed. And I'm kind of, um, I know the decision is correct for me to end the marriage, but I'm really worried about the future. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, am I going to be alone? Am I going to, you know, find... Because I believe, like, I'm a messenger, um, and I think that I can help empower women. And I just feel like, am I going to get there? Am I on the right path? Um, I just need some clarity. Okay. And, again, like, all these lessons are coming to me, like, my past and my future are kind of colliding. Because I'm in the same marriage that my parents were in. Um, mm-hmm. I can't recreate mm-hmm. it. And I'm just mm-hmm. feeling really just overwhelmed, I guess. Yeah. Overwhelmed. Right. And, and not just overwhelmed by, um, events and happening, but like by all the awarenesses opening up all at the same time. So what do you do for your, um, what's your physicality? Like, do you exercise or do you do, uh, walking? I guess, I don't know what in um, Houston yeah, walking lately, is. Popular. Um, I have two small children and lately one thing that's been great for me is, um, just going on evening walks with the kids kind of like after dinner. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. been, um, it's been really life-changing just the last couple of weeks just going on those walks, kind of being with nature and smelling the yeah. flowers and being, you know, just outside and not connected to technology. Yeah. So I think that um, sometimes when you have so much going on, like definitely you want to have some kind of um, meditation practice of some kind, even if it's, um, you know, the type that I teach the spiritual intuition, it's not a very long process. You just go in for 10 minutes or so, but, or maybe you like a sitting practice, but this idea of the physicality for you, it's like, Mm -hmm. that's the only thing that's going to clear you. And maybe you keep walking in nature until it gets too hot. And then maybe you guys, I don't know, go swimming. I'm not sure, but Mm -hmm. setting that up as the practice so that you can count on, okay, for this period of time, (laughs) nature's going to unwind my thoughts for me. Or um, I'm also, I'm seeing in the summer more like swimming or for this period of time, we're going to go to the pool and the water is going to just clear it all out for me. And for some reason, I'm feeling like you've got to have that every day. It's like that becomes your practice. Um, As for the other things, you're not going to be alone. You're absolutely going to succeed. And it's really um, just the challenge of, you know, when you, when you have these lofty goals and you want to create stuff, you're going to have challenges like you're facing right now um, continually. And you're just going to have to learn to, to manage them. And so part of everything that you're learning is like, how do I manage how do I manage like all these thoughts swirling and all this stress and all this confusion? How do I manage that? It's like, Oh, I manage that by walking in nature with the kids or so just take this as, as a big um, slice of you're going to have a smaller version of this many times as you begin to build this um, platform that you're going to create. So just learn how to manage it now. And it makes it a lot easier makes it a lot yeah, easier. I'm, I'm actually crying as you're talking because it's, it's, the, uh, it's the awareness. It's like there's too much coming at me at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, it's hard. Yep. It's really hard to uh, wrangle that energy and then fight all this other energy that I'm having to. Yeah. Uh, well, and I know. And that, you know? yeah, and that's why. That's why, you know, meditation is kind of in some ways it just adds more energy in. And so, but nature, it just softens everything out. It just changes your vibe. And that's nature's like healing to you. So, or to everyone. 
so those kinds of ways of letting it letting yourself be nature's like a giant big massage only it's just nature massage <laughs> i don't know just just allow yourself to have that be released by all the different vibration around you like, this is going to be the, like the big question is, is like you know are we going to have peace i feel like we've had a very chaotic family life for so long and you know i've just been praying and praying just for all mm-hmm. of us my soon to be ex-husband included it's like we all just need peace it's mm-hmm. like are we going to have mm-hmm. that you know yes you, yes and you're gonna you're gonna um you're going to have peace, you're not going to be alone, and you're going to create this, uh, I'm just calling it a platform. Okay. Uh, everything that you have in your vision is going to come to pass. It's just that you're in that, you know, you're sort of, you're the Titanic is sinking and you're jumping <laughs> off into the water and swimming to shore. So it's all, it's just the rough time, but this will be over soon. Okay. So take heart, take heart. Thank All right, Jenny, much. thank you for calling. Yeah, I'm going to okay. take a super, super quick break. Uh, you guys, uh, you're listening to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. I'd love for you to get my new book, Messages from the Divine. You can get that on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And we will be back in just a flash. Are you a seeker on the path of soul growth? Did you know that Sarah Wiseman's new book, Messages from the Divine, Wisdom for the Seeker's Soul, comes with the free Seeker's Guide? This 11-week online course helps you dive deep into the teachings of Sarah's new book, and it's Sarah's gift to you. Get Messages from the Divine and your free Seeker's Guide now at sarahwiseman.com. Some people know a good thing when they hear it. Alternative Talk 1150. We are back with more Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. That song is Om Shanti. It's from my band, Martyrs of Sound. And for those of you in Seattle, uh, uh, we are coming to Seattle at East West Books in May. Yes, in May. (laughs) Um, We're going to do a a lecture and a concert. I'm going to sing that exact song. And then the next day we are going to do, uh, I'm going to do, um, a workshop. So, uh, East West books. And then also in May, I'm coming to Portland at new Renaissance books and a couple other places, Corvallis and Salem, Oregon. So, uh, check the events page on my website, sarahwiseman.com. Also coming later on in June, going to be in Denver, and then, uh, not quite sure when, but I'm going to be in Mountain View, California at that East West Books. All righty. Uh, looks like we have Christina patiently waiting. Christina calling from California. Welcome. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for taking my call. I hope you're well. Yeah. Yes, thank um, you. What can I assist you with today? Uh, so I have had an itch to shift my work and career for some time now, and You know, for many years, I was feeling so stuck and couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. And now I have several options ahead of me. And because I'm multi-passionate, I'm sort of wondering where my time and my energy might be best 
spent and really where I might be of best service um, in the world. So I'm just kind of wondering what mm-hmm. you're seeing there. What are the... Um... Well, first, I want to comment on the multi-passionate. I have not heard that term yet, and I love it. That's great. Multi-passionate. Um, what are the two top ones that you're considering, just super briefly? I just want to compare those two. Yeah, sure. So one is sort of doing opening my own business, um, hopefully mm-hmm. finding a partner to do that with. Um, and that would be sort of focused on supporting people, you know, finding their meaning and purpose and developing mm-hmm. their consciousness and their health and wellness. Um, my background is as a psychologist, and so it would be kind of coming full circle, I think, back to what I was originally trained to do, but in a, in a different context. Um, okay. And the other would be to, you know, stay working maybe for a different organization, but similar kind of nonprofit work, um, you know, where I'm sort of working more broadly, um, you know, with folks around, you know, health and wellness and organizational climate and culture and things like that. Okay. Thank you. That helps me out a lot because I was like multi-passionate. That might mean there there's multi-options and that's what I'm seeing. So um, yes to starting your own business. That's like step one. And that um, the partner, you know, you kind of, you don't need a partner that's pretty interesting. Like, like it might be nice to co-work with people, but you don't need like an official business partner. You might more loosely, uh, in fact, I'd recommend that you, it's just you, but then you maybe have some, you know, like people when they share us, share a space or that kind of thing. But, um, the business is yours. Uh, you have some folks that you, um, kind of co-share space or, or that kind of programs, that kind of thing, but you have your own you're not in a legal partnership. You're in a single business. And then after that gets going for a while, there's this looping back around to say, hey, nonprofit, I'd like to prevent present this proposal to you or I'd like to present this offering to you or or, vi- or you come present an offering to us. I'm, I'm not sure how that works, but it's almost like you set up the, I'm going to call it the universe that is your business and you use that as your um, as the hub to create quite a bit of um, other connections going forward. And it's interesting because it's like you have to have the business set up in order. Like you, you just you, Christina. It it has to be Christina as a business in in order to make these connections and to take this where you're trying to take it. Um, it's almost like a I'm, I'm not sure why, but that's where it is. The other thing is to look at is, um, you know, we can help deeply or we can help broadly. Uh-huh. It, deeply, we can help, you know, one one or two people, you know, just small at a time or broad. And that's so valid. Or broadly, we can help lots of people. And um, it feels like you're kind of in the middle there. Like you're, you're doing both. So... Uh-huh you're probably having session work and you're probably having bigger programs. You're not doing one or the other. You're, you're, um, encompassing both of those. What, what was your timing for when you thought you were going to start this? Uh, you know, in my mind, I, it's just always been there. Um, and mm-hmm. recently I, you know, I would kept getting this message, like start before you're ready, like start figuring this out mm-hmm. before you feel like you're ready. And so I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure out, you know, I've been offered jobs at other places and it's like, do I really want to put my energy into starting a new job or do I just sort of stay where I am and start to phase my business, you know? Yeah, that's, it's the second one. Yeah. Yeah. It's this, it's, yeah. And, and even, um, you know, you'd be surprised how much energy can get created just by, uh, legally starting a business, you know, the, whatever the legal steps are for the business and then like ordering business cards. <laughs> it's just surprising yeah. how far that can setting up a website. Like, like there's a lot to do to set things up, but it's surprising how just going in with that intention, it uh-huh. just, it just very, so yeah, you should start like today, like not even tomorrow. You can start today. And there's really, um, there's absolutely no reason to wait in this particular case. So yeah, good. 
Good. I'm very excited for you. It's a really positive time. And um, I don't see, I think the previous caller, um, you know, there was this idea that there were some challenges to face, but I don't think you're going to have a lot of challenges uh, for quite a while. I think once you grow, there will be some, but at the beginning, I think you're going to have super smooth sailing, um, which will be really nice. Yeah. Would be nice. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Episode. Well, good luck to you. Yeah. Yeah. Just step into this. This you won't. You won't look back. You'll be very happy. All thank right. you, Christina, for your call. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate. Bye. I appreciate it. I'm going to read a little bit from my new book, Messages from the Divine, uh, which you can get at sarahwiseman.com or on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Uh, this idea: When does spiritual change happen? And uh, Here's the book says, here's this funny thing. When you start waking up, when you start becoming conscious, it's confusing. You keep getting pulled back and forth between your regular self with all those distractions and feelings and ups and downs and your soul self, which is beginning to show you how to live in bliss you keep moving from regular life, again, with all the drama and feelings that arrive there, and soul life, which is a steady infusion of pure love, peace, and calm. So you're getting a taste of what's there, but you also keep getting yanked back into earth life. I just want to comment, you know, this is kind of what most of the callers, a lot of you guys uh, are, are going through right now. This, this year awakening or you've awakened and yet you haven't uh, necessarily figured out how to sustain that feeling in every single day. And that's what we're here for, this practice, to learn to sustain this bliss and calm and peace and sort of detach from the trauma and drama and chaos. But it's confusing at first, and it's confusing for a long time. I've been on this journey myself 18 years. And <laughs> many people can go faster than me, right? But I just, uh, you know, <laughs> I've been very stubborn, and uh, it's it's taken the universe a lot of a lot of hard work to get me to even a semblance of this peace and bliss and calm. We just each, we just each have to make our own way. So here are the messages from the divine. Uh, this continues. Uh, this can be one of the most frustrating times. This passage where you can see the bliss, taste it, know it, and yet you can't sustain it all the time. And yet, little by little, over weeks or months or years, something begins to shift. You begin to taste bliss, nirvana, love, peace, whatever you want to call enlightenment. And you begin to experience it more often. And then out of nowhere, on an ordinary day, everything suddenly becomes extraordinary. We'll stop there for now. Um, this book, Messages from the Divine, you can pre-order it now. What it's got is it's got all these teachings that I received um, in meditation or in channeling. And then it's got exercises that you can do. And then we also have a free 11 week online seekers guide. We've got almost a thousand people signed up for it already. It's absolutely free. It's a premium course. You can get it on my website, sarahwiseman.com. You don't have to buy the book. Uh, you can get the book. It's not in the libraries yet. Um, you could share it with a friend. Um, but if you're interested in embarking on this course of study of working from the book, being in the seekers guide course, just go to sarahwiseman.com and you will see the information there. I also want to announce, I'm pretty excited. I just put up my first video uh, yesterday and today. And I have not done video ever. 
And it's pretty fun. So I might be diving into that a little bit more, but you can go to the website and I can't remember where it is. It's also on Facebook and, um, just, uh, would love to, um, would love to hear from you guys. I think we're going to do some fun things with more videos coming up. Uh, anyway, it's a fun way to communicate and, uh, happy to, happy to have that available to you. Everybody, uh, we will be back next week with more Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. Thanks for listening. You can find me at sarahwiseman.com. And I look forward to being with you next time. Want more of Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman? Tune in weekly for more divine teachings on living a soul-led life. Want Sarah's books, courses, and free gifts? Visit sarahwiseman.com.